Hey, Star Trek Fleet Command fans. Welcome to part two of the big interview I did with Istio and James Bond. And you're going to see that here in a couple minutes. This is part one. If you haven't watched it already, it is on my YouTube channel. And I would absolutely encourage you to check it out. Getting three varied viewpoints between myself, Istio, and James Bond. Someone trying to live the free-to-play dream. Somebody in the middle and then somebody at the very top would recommend you check it out. And if you need that, again, check out my channel. You're already on it, so just go find that video. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, questions, like I said before, hit me up. I do think that y'all's interest in this series says we should do more of it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, jump into part two of the big interview. Hey, right, rhymes. the intro music yeah Woo which does lead me to a couple of i think basics that a lot of people will know is what were some of the pitfalls that you noticed that you did mistake wise i know you hit on one big regret but what are mistakes that you have fixed say progressing as a free-to-play from g4 g5 now and g6 that you have found that are hey this is the area you really want to focus on being efficient yeah, so camping is one of them. Just sitting in an ops level longer than you should. Um, that's a waste of time and progression. It costs you weeks and months of progression. Uh, another one is also um, just falling into all the traps that are like every day we get new traps, new SLBs and shiny things. And and sometimes, yeah, it's cool to have it, but ask yourself, do you really need it? Like, is it well, really don't actually going to get me that? Oh. He's going to say yes. <laughs> He does yeah. need it. <laughs> it's like you said, it's goals, right? I mean, we said it's an MMO. In an MMO, there's no like set path. You choose your goals, you, whatever makes you happy. That's For you, you're a ship there's collector, no answer, you like it. Right? Like all three of us yeah. are very different play styles, but all three of us, I, I believe, are all having fun. And that hopefully is the goal. And hopefully people watching yeah. this can learn from something. Even if I get, it is fun to poke fun at Eastio that he does have to have it. I don't think there's anything... <laughs> He can uh, attest, I've, I've brought up to him, like, dude, do you really need to go after this? Like, I've got to see how it works. I'm like, I guess, whatever, man. My primary thing is just in learning up all the game mechanics, right? I love the game mechanics. I dove straight into arenas. I love the PvP mechanics, but there has to be something more behind it than just killing miners and that kind of stuff. Yeah. There has to be a mechanic behind it. So, yes, I buy it all, right? I want it all. I'm collecting it all. I want to learn every little mechanic they offer. And then if I continue on, it's because it's a mechanic I love. Like waves, I still do. Arena, I'm going to do forever. Incursions, I love. I'm never going to be that person sitting on a server killing miners. That's so boring. Yeah. I want to hit you with um, a couple of directed questions. Uh, just because I want to give everybody, seeing three different play styles of what people kind of find fun and joy and what we all use in common. So. Like you, uh, I think all three of us use Spox Club pretty regularly. I know James, you do. I know I've talked oh, yeah. to you about it. Uh, what about tools like SCFC.WTF? Because for me, shout out to Chrono and SCFC Statistics. One thing that, and this comes back to my MMO background, I always loved being strong for where I was at. So comparable to if you played like the MMO Rift, being very strong in certain regions of that map, even if you're weaker in other areas. Like for me, a goal is to be very, very strong as a 53 in G5, even if that means I'm not good at G6. How much do you pay personal attention to that? I'll start with James, when it comes to using that as like a comparison tool, or do you just simply not find any value at all in it? No, I mean, and, um, and the WTF, that's the, um, the Ripper website, right? Or what it used to be Ripper's website. No, that, uh, what used to be Ripper's website was FCC.space. Uh, WTF is okay. the one we use to track, say, power levels, who's participating in oh, tournaments. I don't use it at all. Yeah. Didn't think you would. I just don't care. Yeah. yeah. And then opposite end of the spectrum, because I'm somewhere in the middle. Like, I like using it to set my own personal goals. I had a great rivalry with somebody on my server. His name is Fred. And we were right at the same spot at 50. We were leveling up together and... He has since significantly jumped me, but it allowed us to track and see where we're at compared to the rest of the game. And then Eastio, we are sitting at the very top, but I know you use it. How do you look at tools like that? Do they have any value for you? Yeah, STFC, WTF, I use primarily for events like Arena, just to judge who I'm paired with. Arena, they would give us the names. I would yeah. instantly look them up. 
and then see, okay, we're about this strength level. Uh, this is what we're going to face. And we have a minute and a half before the arena starts to sort this kind of stuff out. Box Club, uh, I use it the same way James uses it because, mm -hmm. frankly, even with infinite resources, you need to plan. Um, just doing it wildly, you would end up putting yourself straight into a corner. And then STF, STFC space is incredibly useful for information about firing patterns. Every new hostel you encounter, every new game mechanic, you want to go look up, you go hit them, you find out where your weakness was, analyze the firing patterns, analyze how the damage is occurring, look at the metric in the event that's associated with it, and then understand how to optimize against it. Because you should always be optimizing. I don't win a lot of these SLBs for damage or loot by just overpowering them. I'm carefully looking at, like in this last event with the loot for Vindy scrap, uh, the Vindicator was kind of the key to do that. If you yeah. had a huge cargo and a really good firing pattern, how did I figure that out? FTFC space and looking at everything carefully, looking through my ships, looking through my officers, etc. It's a super important thing that I do every day. And just to bounce off that, James, is all of that kind of like on the ignore list for you? Like you don't really focus on any of that at all? Not so much to that, that level of detail. I mean, as long as my ship can kill it, it's uh, it's a win. And, you know, if I can get a few kills in a haul, that's fine. Um, like, yeah, I don't... I, I I'm my, my account is not going to be in a stage where this is going to be relevant unless, let's say, I reach high 60s before the next expansion of the game then i can probably start diving in a little more and get into all of that part but you will yeah, no, i'm not using way. it a lot don't expect yeah. no sorry for ECO, but don't expect a huge expansion with there only being five thousand people in y'all's area right now in a game of 250 they've got to get more of us to level up so i did want to use that as a segue however what have you completely ignored even if something if you did a little bit but what are some of the big things that you've just said, hey, my goal is opsing up. What are things that you've just said, this isn't worth my time, and you diverted that time into other aspects of the game? Th anything G4, G5, or even G6, what are just things that you completely said, this isn't worth it for me? Um, well, at this stage, I'm ignoring G4 paying uh, events. Um, PvP is the number one sacrifice in ship tiers. Again, like I... I know that it's much more comfortable to run a, T, um, a tier six or seven or eight ship before you move up, but yeah. tier four is doing the job. So you repair it a couple more times. It's just, yeah, I, I always measure it. Like, is it going to be worth it for me? With that real quick. I just, yeah. and again, this is not like a critique. This is just an honest question. So yeah. as a player, you're okay if your tier four ship takes multiple trips, as long as it gets the job done, right? So let's use Silas as an example. Yes. Like if you had to right. make, three trips you're fine with that as long as it got done well but that's the thing i don't have to make three trips um because i'm already in the system i blow up i repair and i hit it again yeah and i, I don't have to fly again so it's just like uh, two more clicks well you use silence as an example because that's the system you did yeah. have to go to but uh right. with it being one of the tokens as well. but yeah i just wanting people to have comparable game styles for you with being efficient that also includes being willing to and again not saying this in a negative connotation to make those trips yeah. get what you need and then ops up and that way that run you were just doing becomes easier because you opt up got access to more stuff right within reason though because if i have to spend a haul for two hostiles i'm not ready to move up there's just that's too much if i have to make two trips two whole trips mm -hmm. especially with g6 without um um the super highways queue times are just really long when it comes to things like armadas um did you notice that being any type of slowdown or were you just simply we'll push through and we'll catch up on it i mean one thing that i personally do is i like being able like right now at in the low 50s i can take out the strongest dominion solos that exist but to do that i had to have very powerful ships for my level how did you approach things like Bajor? Because for me, one of the reasons I'm big on punching up an Armada yeah. is I want to triple pull those Bajoran loot boxes because they give so much materials. For you, yes. when you were progressing to that point, what was the balance for you between hitting as good as I can, but also not sacrificing materials to dump into the ship so you could ops up? Well, that's the thing. I didn't really experience too many difficulties with those, even uh, in G5, because I use, I just pop Exos. I buff all of my ships. 
and then I just take those things down. I mean, I go mm -hmm. pretty much, yeah, and now I just solo them with the Enterprise D. I just buff it up and just solo it with one ship. I even solo the um, uh, the G5 Armadas, the Group you, Armadas, uh, I just do it by myself. Where you're at, you haven't dumped, uh, jumped into G6 solos yet, have you? No, I have. I'm, I do uncommons easily. I didn't start the uh, rare ones because I can't, all, not, my ships can't get there. There's no um, rare solo armada system with the housing in it, so I can't really do those yet. I'll have to wait to probably 63 to even start playing around with that. Uh, what about some of the other loops that have come out? Uh, I know you've been doing this for a while now, so you didn't have like growing pains of going through Zindi or anything, but do you see a lot of value in, say, the Zindi loop or the mirror loop? How do you approach those? Not from really an efficiency yeah. standpoint, but how important are those to your gameplay with it being focused on progression? Critical. Every new loop pretty much is designed in a way that you need those materials. Because if you look at whatever trees or favors that they unlock, I mean, look, just mirror, I have it pulled up. Like these are efficiency ones yeah you saving so much on buildings this um, we're talking about weeks and months worth of progression like i max those right away well, that saves are, you a lot because of mirror tree i was able to make a video about how you know because ECO, you probably remember this the iss jelly farm people were doing that in vip for a while because they had the dolomite primes everything that allowed them but now with mirror in conjunction with dolomite sourcing free to play like james can turn iss jellies into positive farms that wasn't available until new content came out so. and the game always kind of evolves that way right the game always offers us more opportunity in the future for improved efficiency it's kind of always evolved in that that path everyone who follows in my me and god's path they're going to have an easier time getting to 70. we want to hit you with a big one james because i know you tried yeah. all spreadsheets but i didn't ask you about this first so you have to you're, you're unprepared do you know how many primes that you have free to play and do you track that at all? Like, do you goal set? I know the prime efficient ship engineering one's one I harp on a lot, so you probably do, but like all the Dolomite sourcing now, the away team sourcing, do you have a list of primes that you say, hey, these are ultra valuable to me. I want to get because I now have the ability as a free to play to grind them. Or do you track those at all? Or is it just kind of you come upon them when you do? I well, usually I kind of rely on your videos and other content creators to, you know, show the highlights of them. No, I mean, for real. Because I just don't have the time to do the research by myself. So you guys summarize it pretty well. I mean, clearly uh, you're going to focus on, because I, I can't wait to see what people's response is. Because so many people ask, how do you get the materials? And your answer was refinery, which I loved. But that means that you had to focus on the primes for those refineries too. Like you had to scrap, get your G3 ones. Then you went and uh, you said you used your first G6 uncommon to do the G5 refined Yeah, primes. but when I read G6, I mean, that I, I didn't really upgrade, uh, do the prime for G5 until I was already in G6 and G5 is not as important anymore. So I still had to do it without it. That's true. Um, but yeah. it's helping but your Enterprise D push up. Yeah. But one more thing, I think there was another question that I saw repeated uh, a bunch of times is if I hoard on anything. Yes. And here's the thing. There are some currencies in the game that they pay out more the longer you can hold them, the more you go up in ops. So loyalty tokens, photon tokens. There we go. You want to hold on those as long as humanly possible, especially because in Syndicate and the Syndicate tree, these here, every two um, levels, they go up in value so much. So I don't cash those in unless I'm actually in range to pull the trigger on an ops upgrade. If I see that that, that can close the gap and I can do it today instead of two weeks from now, sure. Otherwise, hold. One just big, hold patient one big thing i teach and again acknowledging you and i have very different play styles i'm curious if we have overlap here and then i'm curious how Eastio looks at photon tokens if he even cares but one thing i i talk a lot about like if you're at the end of g4 start hold, uh, hoarding all of your photon tokens because the months have no limit so you hit g5 if you've got three months saved up you can turn all that in at once big thing that i hit on how do you approach that you're talking about hoarding these do you do it just mm -hmm. you save them up Say you hit 62, now you're currently saving. When you get 63, you'll turn them all in? Or do you save them for big milestones like going into G6, going into G5? How do you pro approach hoarding those tokens and then using them? And when do you do that? Right. So um, like right now, I think uh, I'm like about a month, a month and a half away from 63, something like that. And I forgot the number. I didn't sync my account in the last few days. But if I see that I can actually, uh, a weekend comes up, and I see that I can cash in some photon tokens. And let's say that's going to give me the shards for the treasury. Or 
that's going to be the unlock, the, the thing that I'm missing to actually reach the next big milestone, which for me is ops leveling up, then yes, I will use it because the payout that I get sooner from being in a higher ops level is going to pay off. It's going to be a lot more than if I just sit and hoard and hold it. Yeah. So is it's it really running the math also with efficiency researches. Like, yeah, I spend X amount of uh, um, rare materials to save, but how much am I saving? Yeah. Yeah, I love this because yeah. for me, what I did is I saved, went into G5, I saved a free treasury, and then I saved, I think, three months worth of photon tokens. And everybody's like, well, Rev, how did you get your ship so big so quickly? Mm -hmm. Because that's why. But I did the exact opposite of what James is going to do. I dumped it all into things like the Vorcha. <laughs> and James like, why didn't you go to 55? You could have kept going. <laughs> But you but, love it, so, you know, uh, why so, not? <laughs> and then, Eastio, I, I am curious, do you view things like photon tokens as valuable at all? Or do is that a mechanic that just doesn't provide you with much? At this point, I have a Pavlovian relationship with the 7 and 30-day tokens. I spent enough time being in James's shoes that every time that comes up, I get excited. Um, remembering the influx and the uh, resources that are going to come into the account kind of remember that feeling but in reality it has no appreciable impact on my growth i mean i figured that it's kind of obvious with you being at 70 but at the same time you know it's little things you did talk about officer sourcing and maybe you do like saving a hundred dollars on a treasury every now and then picking up a free treasury especially those nice juicy ship parts ones i want to hit like yeah and i'm i'm sorry what would you say you uh, I was just going to say, and yeah, you are correct about the defeeling rods. They are there every so often. I hit that point because you get them in the event tokens as well that um, James can't do. When you get to the completion of all event, you also get the ceiling. So um, it collects and you're like super excited for that one $100 pack you don't have to spend. But when you're spending 10000 a month, who cares, right? Oh, I'm yeah. going to forge you my mortgage payment. Uh, I do want to get <laughs> both of y'all. I can joke for those watching. I can joke with you because we've been talking for a long time. And he's cool with it. I do want to get both of y'all's advice to free to play players. And I think that y'all both can provide value insights. Obviously, James, we built this around the idea that you've made it up there, which is fantastic. If you could give some succinct, concise points of like, hey, you're a free to play out there. I recommend you focus on these. Pick, you know, three of your favorite things. Obviously, efficiency is probably going to be your number one. But explain what that means, and then we'll have Eastio throw some out too. Yeah, so when you hit the new ops level, focus on the efficiency researches that you unlocked first and favors. Get as many of those as you can. Hold on the materials. Don't just upgrade buildings towards the next level because you don't know what other new loop is going to come up or you know something's going to come out that's actually going to save you. So just hold, just play, plan it strategically. Um, and... If, if you're holding for like this special event that is going to pay out something spectacular before you spend, I think it's not worth holding back. I mean, I made a decision somewhere along G5, then I'm done holding back. Yeah. Like if I want to, if, if I'm ready to move up today, I'm doing it. I'm not waiting for an officer auction. I just don't care. Because yeah, so again, like 100 shards versus 1500. What is, I do want to hit on that real quick. I don't want to get tied down on it, but what is that like internal difference for you look like? Because you, you are saying hoard and then spend efficiently, but at the same time, when do you make that decision? So if SLBs aren't the reason that you're saying, hey, now's the time to dump, when do you make that decision to dump into the building, spend those materials, or do you just simply run of the mill luck and one month you've got something you want, other months, hey, I was planning to go anyway, we just go. How does it work? Yeah, planning to go anyway, and then I just go. So I, I just look at the math using Spox Club. Like, do I have the materials? If I cash in my um, photon tokens and everything, do I have enough to upgrade? Uh, and I'm two days away from an auction? Sure, I'll wait two days. But if it's like two weeks between arcs, no, I'm not going to wait. All right, so I'm just going to go. What else you got? So I would I would probably condense that to hoard, targeted hoarding, but don't let hoard keep you camping. Is that, that the way you would word it? Yes, don't don't stay there for too long. I mean, something within reason, a few days, maybe a couple of weeks, but I don't recommend staying for months. Yeah. It depends on what your goals are. If you're a yeah. collector, you want to collect, go ahead. Well, there's one thing I will say is, yeah. of the three of us, we all have the exact same premise. We're all very goal-oriented. We just have very different goals. So at the core, a lot of what we want to do requires the same. I mean, I have to be efficient. I'm just being more efficient about things like ships and 
I'm using barometers of, okay, where are my peers at as more of a measuring stick? You're doing it more op space. Istio is doing a lot of it very heavy in the PVP side of the world. I mean, I, I sit down and listen to Istio talk about fighting Pummel and all these other guys. So we have the same core idea. We're just going for different goals at the end. But what other free-to-play type recommendations would you have besides that targeted kind of hoarding? Is there just, hey, don't forget ba uh, doing Bajor, never stop doing this. Anything else yeah. you can throw at them? Um, I guess I take it for granted, but I my brain is already pre-programmed to ignore everything behind the paywall. It just doesn't exist. So just forget about FOMO. Forget about it. Just yes. don't let that, oh my God, I didn't get that latest thing or whatever. Who cares? It, if it's if it's really important, it will become free to play in a few months anyway. Yeah, if it, you know, if it's cosmetic or PvP based, then yeah, maybe longer. But yeah, just ignore FOMO. Really, it's because you're not gonna you're not gonna have fun well, if you're always looking at what's missing. The truth is, they're going to have a new FOMO every month, right? So like, yeah. if you want that FOMO fix, don't worry, you can skip it this month. You'll get it next month. It's going to be there, right? It's just yeah. Even if today theoretically you have everything, next month something else comes up and then okay now i want it again well, it's like you know, eco is an opportunity for you to chime in because i know i know jokingly I've, I've told you like hey what if you just stopped how long would it take and you you've said it probably would take you know months for people to surpass you but even then it would happen right because of the fomo tactics this game uses to incentivize further content and purchases right eco yep eventually um everyone's gonna pass you right the next closest person to me is one billion behind but that's just ego number it really doesn't matter what really matters is the result in the arena right or the incursions when you're fighting that to me because that's what this segues into my actual goal what's my goal my goal is pvp i love to go into these and be able to compete with the largest players in the game and i think a lot of the largest players in the game have that goal um, and one, two, three percent here and there matters a lot in those fights. You can see it when me and Pummel fought each other. The one, two, three percenters here and there all added up. And it wasn't even really all that close in a fight. So <clears throat> for us, it's, it's a hyper. It's, I don't even want to describe it as FOMO in our case, because it's a it's a real tangible thing where for our goals we buy it we get it or we lose those fights at our level i have to win those slbs i have to win those regional slbs etc etc to get you realize that you just the... described fomo <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. you by <laughs> definition said it's not really fomo proceeds to describe fomo but it is <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, at the end it. of the day it's what um, you enjoy and you want to be able to continually yeah. do what you enjoy Exactly right. I want to be the most powerful ship in any given cross server event. And I'll the be, only way you do that is by getting it all. Long term, I'll be very interested to see if they continue to build on arena, if that shifts your paradigm at all. Because as you've seen, being the strongest in arena doesn't make you the best, right? I mean, tactics. Well, really absolutely. Key there, so. Yes, right. Because tactics played a huge role. The team that did the best against us was a team of 65s. And like, for anybody who that, is unfamiliar, by the way, essentially the difference between a 70 and a 65 might as well be the difference between a 65 and a 25. Huge power gap. Huge. Yeah. And I mean, we did manage to overpower them in the end. Uh, even with the crossover strategy, we weren't, it wasn't very effective. We did manage to overpower them and win those matches, but just barely. And then we countered strategy wise. So while I say, my primary goal is to be the most powerful ship in any given encounter. I still love the game mechanics too, right? The gotta yeah. collect them all mechanism. It's not, it's not FOMO. I just love picking apart the math and the mechanics of the game as well. So having it is the only way to actually do those tests. Well, for you, uh, just in this case, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. I just wanted to kind of get you to hit on the second part of what I said before is. What is some advice for you at the very top? And I, I know you've got friends and alliance mates that are free to play. Whether they play like me or James, no matter their goal, what are some recommendations you would give to them? And is it just simply ignore FOMO like James did? Or is it, you know, what are what are strategies that you think would be good for other players to pick up if they're not spending on all the new things? 
Yeah, if you're not going, if you're going free to play, I think it is all about the efficiency, right? Carefully sitting down, if you care about your placement at all. If you're just going out and having fun, I think that's the first thing you have to focus on. Just have fun. If you're op 39, you log in for the social, you don't grow at all, perfectly fine. You don't need anything from me. Um, but if you're stressing out because your neighbor is moving up two ops levels for every one of yours, your primary focus needs to be efficiency. Yeah. And I definitely want to say this out there because obviously everybody knows me for camping, but I really want to reinforce a point, especially with these two people here. If you're at 39 and you can beat a Zindi hostile and you're, you've beaten all your solo armadas and stuff, stop waiting. Go. So, Unless you have a goal like John Connor did and Sugar Fat Man. I mean, those are people who were 39. They wanted to be like 45 million power, which I'll admit is pretty impressive to get that strong as a 39. But if you're out there wondering, because I have people ask all the time, when should I go up? Well, I mean, when you can complete the content. If you're ready to go, you know, set your own goals, whatever those are. If they're very much like James, where you want to level up, well, then it's pretty easy formula wise. You level up simply as soon as you can beat the content, you go up immediately. Just go. If you want to play in a, hey, I want to be really strong. Like I personally love being able to punch up to a 59 at 53 or 50. It just, it gives me like a sense of I'm beating the man. Well, I can't do that if I rush up, but that, that gives me my barometer of when I can, right? Like if I want to be able to do that, I know I've got to be this amount of strength. But now if I want to go fight a 63, well, I'm not doing that at 53. I know I have to go to that next level and then be super efficient at that level to punch up. So whatever your goals are, efficiency is key. But I would also say that too many people get stuck on the time that takes because maybe their friend was there in 2020 and they were at level 39 for a year and a half. I promise you, you don't need to be there a year and a half in 2024. You just don't. And once you stop caring about I'm ops, I want you to stop caring about I'm Ops 39 or I'm Ops 55 or whatever, and that other Ops 55 can kill me and that, that stresses me out or that makes me unhappy. Once you stop caring about that, get rid of the fear of missing out, get rid of the comparing yourself to your neighbor. And once you do that, yes, just Ops up as high as you can reasonably while being able to complete your dailies comfortably, and you will get the most out of the game freebie-wise that you can possibly get. So I agree. Stop, I, I think we universally agree to. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I agree 100. percent And I, I would add that if really, like, let's say you're 55 and, or I don't know, you're 53 and a 55 is beating you, then if you move up to 56, you come back to him with a 56 ship, you got him. So and I, I want to counter gonna that, that real quick by saying, yeah. if I beat him with, it took me going to 56, he's still better than me because I had to level up a lot to beat him. But again, <laughs> it's. It's a great example of goal-oriented gameplay, which we're all essentially preaching, right? Creating goals and obtaining them because that's at the root of the joy. I mean, it, it, both of y'all said ignore FOMO. That's kind of where I'm at and is big on whatever play style you want. The key for all of us is to have fun. And whatever that looks like, don't feel like you have to be this style, that style. Hopefully, if you've watched this video so far, you've made it through the 45, 50 minutes we've been. You've learned some great tips, uh, especially the hyper-efficiency of... I'm, I know I probably shouldn't. I'm leaving away one big point from our big free-to-play over there. Do the refines. Because <laughs> I'll admit, I don't do my mat refines as studiously as you do. I do not time it twice a day, get them, triple pull. I don't do that. And it's making me evaluate my own gameplay on what I should prioritize yeah. more. Because that's such a big thing for you. But heck, I've gotten caught in the loop of we all just talk about how terrible the refinery is for the past six years. And it does pay out less than an event, but you're right. It adds up if you're getting 100 extra pulls in the course of a month. That is mathematically an improvement. So Yes, and I one more tip that actually you reminded me is because you have six docks, if you are true free to play, six docks, they have to be working all the time. If you have all six ships sitting in the base and it's not like base defense during incursions, you're doing something wrong. Employ them, put them to work, throw them out there. If they get blown up while mining, fine, just repair and send them back. I know I can see you You're cringing. hurting my soul, man. You're hurting me. Oh, gosh. But at the you same time, I mean, you just, you know. it's great advice. Like, I love it. I mean, yeah. it's because people have said, hey, Rev, how do you do your docks? Well, people know that I have eight docks, but I only have two that are set up for mining. That's it. If you're a pure oh, free-to-play out there, 
If you really want to be a pure free-to-play and you want to progress like James is, you cannot play how Rev is. You can't. You um, can't is this hurting two... you right here? It doesn't hurt me because I didn't have to do okay. it. But if you told me that's how I had to do it to play, I wouldn't be able yeah. to. But I respect it because if you're able to do that and you're being successful like you are, you're enjoying the game. And it, again, I just to reiterate what we've said at nauseum at this point, that should be the focus point. But you're right. If you're a pure free-to-play out there, you have to be efficient. And efficiency is not being like Rev where I have Armada Dock, Armada Dock, that's also slash PvP, et cetera. Those docks don't do anything unless I'm doing Armada or PvP. They do nothing. And then I'm only using maybe Dock 4, which is my main PvE dock, and I'm using Docks 7 and 8 to go mine something where you have something going at all times. Everything is purposeful. Yeah. So, like, if I sit in deep space right now, um, they're all mining. But if I actually put my two hours of playtime and I go down to regular space, I have two or three of them hunting hostiles in different systems. I have other three maybe mining ISO, whatever. Just all the docks are actually doing active work. And then before I go AFK again, I go back to deep space, throw them out there to mine something, and just leave the game. 21 billion resources mined. I'm scared to yeah. look up mine. I guess I'll put it on the screen. Yeah, you should. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, I'm going to look it up right now because uh, I've technically been playing longer than you. Whoa. Yeah, like a year and a half longer, right? I'm, yeah, um, I I'm at, yeah, you've got 20 billion more than me. <laughs> oh, God. I'm at 1.7 well, billion. I mean, but at the same time, like if I go yeah. to say, um, where is your PVP ships killed? At the very top, right? Oh, oh, um, yeah. yeah where was your um, player ships destroyed? I, I'm, yeah. I'm not afraid to die. Yeah, you you've go got a low KD and twenty one thousand yeah. player ships. I mean, that's for uh, Eastio for comparison. If you have your account pulled up, what's your player ships destroyed number? Oh, you mean the kill ratio? You can give me the ratio, but also how many actual ships have you blown up? Uh, forty thousand. So double what James? And my has. ratio, yeah, about double, and my ratio is thirteen. Thirteen. Wow. All right. Wow. <laughs> like twelve year old on Xbox Call of Duty right now, just try harding it. Jesus, great KD. Uh, my oh, KD man. is like three, <laughs> I think. So it's it's better than James, but it's nowhere near Eastio. This video is going along. I want to thank both of y'all for hanging out and giving great advice, great stories to how y'all both gotten where y'all are. Maybe we can do this again, especially. I'm very curious to see how James approaches. Not that you haven't made it to Sigma, because you have, but like the biggest parts of Sigma are still ahead of you, right? You know, the, the deepness of the yeah. hazards, the biggest ships, and uh, all those parts of the, the rare models like you were talking about. And the new things they're going to be adding into G6. Uh, so very curious to see where you go. And as always, if you're watching, drop down in the comments if you have questions for either one of them. And I'll try to forward them to them or they can go to the comments if they want and answer them. But big thank you to both of you for doing this. Because I think the players, it's an interesting perspective to be able to see, you know, what is, at least that I've been able to find, the highest, what I would call free-to-play player, the highest, you know, spender in the game. And then I'm just sitting kind of in the middle. Like, my account's definitely a spender account. It's not high, but I'm definitely not free-to-play. And all the different goals we have between each other. So. Thanks, for, uh, thanks for letting us talk to you. Yeah, thank you, Rev. Of course so. Y'all are awesome, and uh, this is the end of the edited portion. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.